All right, we should be live. We're back. We are working on Arabella Abandoned Doll. Here she is, in case you need a reminder of what she does. All right, so we went over the entire card list last time. We have 236 cards, and we need to whittle this down. Uh, 236 spells, specifically. We need to whittle this down to 60 and 40 lands. We have a bit of wiggle room for Arabella. Um in order to make her um, just right, because she doesn't need a ton of mana for the most part, so she has room to lose some of the um, lands on her list in favor of more spells, but not too much, because it's still a commander deck, and we still need to hit somewhere around 6 mana pretty consistently by the end of the game. So we're just going to go through the list. Refresh my mind what's on it. I did my um, pre-release prep video yesterday and spent like an hour plus talking about all of the instants, spells with flash, and wraths in Foundations. So I did not have it in me to record another hour-long video with me just talking constantly at the time. So... Just going to go through and look for anything. There are a few cards that stood out even when I was going over the list originally. Like, we probably don't need Battle Screech. Um, a one-shot spell that makes four creatures is fine, but we have other um, things that will make lots of little token creatures that are better for the deck. Uh, Goblin Trenches stays for right now. Like I said, Arabella does not need a ton of lands. So as long as she can get to, like, six lands pretty consistently, any excess lands would probably be better off as a handful of 1-1s. Also, they're goblin soldiers, and we have a ton of goblin and soldier payoffs in the deck, so. Uh, Weathered Wayfarer is fine for right now. Siege Gang Commander. Um, Duplicate is probably fine. It's the other one. Um, Eowyn we probably don't need. Uh, Sun Standard is fine for right now. It's doing the thing we want to. Sad Robot. Well, Lost Dreams. All of these are fine. We'll have to figure out what combination of things that make Arabella comfortably attack into everything uh, we want in the deck. So that way cards like Rune Tail, uh, Dolmen Gate and everything. Because we want some number of them, but not all of them. Uh, King Darien is staying for right now. Austere Command, Cloud Goat Ranger could go. They're all fine. Hedge Mage might be a little bit. Like, we have, um, Loran, and we have, um, things like the Viachino Heretic, but maybe the Hedge Mage, Hedge Mage, Gets to stay because it can destroy an artifact and an enchantment when it comes in. As long as we have at least two planes and two mountains in play. Uh, I could see cutting Rise of the Hobgoblins. It's only okay. At um, two hybrid red, white, and X um, to make X one ones. It's a little behind the curve. We have a few uh, one mana and X make X one one spells in the deck. And we have one two mana, but it makes two twos for the X uh, with fourth Aerolingus. So. so Certainty, Martial Coup, Path to Exile, Stone Forge, Raid Bombardment. <clears throat> Elspeth's fine for right now. Geist Honored Monk can definitely go. It only makes two one ones, and the monk itself is not helping anything in our deck particularly well, so do not think we need her. Maybe increasing devotion. Honestly, we probably don't need the Thraben Doomsayer. Uh, we have a lot of other ways to make one one tokens repeatedly. So we don't necessarily need him. It's nice that he's just tap to make one. So it's pretty mana efficient, at least. As far as some of the other I just make a creature things go. 
but to balance that out, it's only one per turn cycle. Also, we really don't want the plus two, plus two to randomly happen. We want to either have it happen because we intended for it to happen, like we're just going to win the game here, so let's give our team a massive buff, or we want it to not happen. We don't want it to happen randomly, kind of outside of our control, because somebody dealt us a handful of damage, and now Arabella's trigger doesn't do any damage. And we don't gain the life, and it doesn't push us back above the total that we needed. <clears throat> Assemble the Legion is fine. War Leader. Frontline Medic is another one of those. Um, like, we attack with it, and our things aren't vulnerable this turn. The combat damage. Uh, Sun Home Guild Mage. So... It does two things we're okay with, but it doesn't do either of them particularly well. So that's one of those. It's either going to get cut because it doesn't do them well enough, or something else is going to get cut and we're just going to go, well, we have this one, and it does that and does the other thing both okay. Elspeth and Perforos almost definitely staying. Aroas is fine for right now. We can get rid of Launch the Fleet. We have to pay one per creature that we want to make an additional 1-1 one -one with. So it's a lot like white and X make X-1-1s, one -ones, but we have to have X-1-1s one -ones in play. And then we have to attack with all of them. So, probably not. Mentor is fine for right now. Secure the waste, definitely. Uh, retreat to Ameria is fine, but I can see cutting it. Captain's Claws, Handwire Garrison, Augmenter is fine, Guardian, Carrie's Ev can probably go. She got added to the list very early, um, but she's kind of underwhelming. At least the Gremlins is fine, Celebrant, Dust to Dawn. Ketra's only okay. She's indestructible, so as far as being a um, thing that makes 1-1 one -one creatures, she survives a lot of stuff that our other things don't. But uh, end of the day, she's only okay, and we have other options for spend some amount of mana, make a 1-1, one -one, so I think that can go. Uh, Throne of the God Pharaoh is just underwhelming in this deck. Uh, we need to be able to attack with everything and have everything live in order to deal all of that extra damage. Um, and it's fine for that, but we don't really need it. We have so many other things going on in this deck. Mirage Mirror is fine for right now. Legion's Landing is fine. Uh, Summoner's fine. In fact, Summoner's pretty decent. Helm of the Host is probably way too expensive. As cool as it would be to get extra Arabellas, I don't think we need it. Like, it's four mana to play, five mana to equip, that's nine mana to do it in one turn, which is kind of where you want to be. You want to be able to just drop it and immediately equip Arabella and attack and get another Arabella. Alright, Dawn of Hope is definitely not 11 mana. Is Dawn of Hope 2, or is it 4? Blanking super hard on it. It is two mana. Okay. So we just hit the one. I thought that's what it was going to be, but I wasn't sure. It's a little typo here while we're at it. Um, Yeah, it's four mana, make a 1-1, one, one, very similar to Oketra, except that it also lets us draw cards when we gain life, which is something we do pretty often. So... I think that stays for right now. <sighs> Legion War Boss is medium. The token he makes has to attack. Um, <clears throat> and attacking with him is okay because he can only mentor 1-1s, one so turning them into 2-2s. Two but he's kind of on the borderline of what I'm looking for. Exaltation's fine. Cavalcade's fine. Franco is fine for right now. He might not make it only because he has to attack. 
and we'd probably rather have our commander be unblockable than Cranko be unblockable, but that won't always be an option. Uh, the castles are fine in their lands. Anax is decent. Intervention. Winota's fine for right now, but if we cut some of the more expensive humans, then she gets to go. The nice thing, though, is that even though they're usually represented by um, human characters in the images, soldier and knight tokens usually are not human soldiers and human knights specifically. So they will count for attacking with non-human creatures to trigger Winota. So that means almost all of our tokens will trigger Winota when they attack. And get a like give us chances. So if we have enough in play, we will just get to go until we find King Darien and the one that protects all creatures with lesser power and makes tokens for non-token creatures that I have. Like all of those can just randomly show up in the middle of combat because we have Winota. So as long as we keep enough of them, we'll keep Winota in the deck. Um Magda is an early play that makes us treasure. Um, so that way, because we might have mana issues if we go a little low on lands from time to time, you know, we might keep a two or three lander and then never see our fourth land. So having things like Magda and Ragavan to get extra treasures is fine. <sighs> Battlecry Goblin can stay for right now. I can see cutting him towards the end when we realize we just don't have room for him. Uh, same thing with Zariel. Uh, sometimes the plus one power in haste will mean that it pushes a lot of my two power creatures out of range. So even though we get to, like, buff Arabella and attack with her the turn we cast her, you know, after she's died a couple of times, then we spend, like, six mana recasting her, and then we can attack with her if she has a clear attack, or if it's just the trigger we're trying to get. Um, we lose out on extra damage from her by buffing all the two power creatures up. So I don't know if we have enough other haste effects where we can cut Zariel, but she also just makes a 1-1 one, one devil token every turn cycle for uh, no downtick at least. It's not an uptick either, so we're never moving towards the um, emblem, which we would really like to get, actually. The emblem's really good for the deck. Um because it would let us attack with Arabella twice in a combat, but I don't see that happening very often. Um, Adeline we want to keep. Savior of Allenbach is surprisingly strong in this deck. Welcoming Vampire is fine. Abel's really strong. Farewell's farewell. Like, I don't think I can build a white commander deck anymore without farewell in it, just because it's so powerful. Um, Lion Sash. Like, maybe I can build one where I'm trying to get all of my stuff killed and bring it back. And having a mass exile is worse than casting something like Austere Command instead. Uh, Rabble Rousing is definitely going to make it to the end. Um, that might be, like, one of the most glued to this deck cards that we have is Rabble Rousing. I attack and I make that many 1-1s. One -ones. This seems way too good. Uh, the Defiler is probably too expensive itself, and the reduced casting cost and the free 1-1 one -one when I cast White Permanence isn't the best. Like, it's basically a bad Oketra's Monument, so I think we can afford to cut it. Uh, these can all stay for right now. Mondrak stays. Skrelv's Hive is fine. Sulfim. White Suns. Elspeth might just be worse than Zariel. Um, her plus one, she does plus to make one one soldiers instead of uh, staying neutral to make them. But her minus is only good if we need to throw Arabella in the air, and losing her um, trigger damage is fine because she's going to be a flying creature. So she'll get in for two extra points. We'll gain one less life. So it's a it's basically a wash. We do one extra damage and gain one less life for putting the counters on her, and 
she has flying, so if we get, have a good attack with a flyer, that's not bad. And then the minus six to reanimate all of my low casting cost stuff is helpful. Yeah, I can see cutting Archangel Elspeth, but we need to be a bit deeper into the cuts. Um, Ortheon is definitely going. That's why I couldn't... I confused his name with Osgiliath, um, which is from Lord of the Rings, because it's Ortheon. Um, but he is the worst out of the copy my stuff creatures that we have. Um... He's too big for Arabella, and he costs two mana instead of one to make a copy. The only thing he has going for him is if we uh, flood out, he can make five copies of something, which is titanic when we're copying uh, something like Siege Gang Commander. I'm going to make five copies of this. That's 20 extra bodies. That is half of everybody's starting life total that Arabella gets to drain in addition to you know, having the Siege Gang and herself and possibly the other, the original Siege Gang Commander's tokens. So, that's a big game, but it's nine mana, and that's not going to come up very often. In fact, I'm pretty sure we can cut him. Pretty sure that he is completely unnecessary. Like, I'd rather have Jaxus, because at least I get to draw a new card for the card I'm discarding every time I activate her. So. Uh, Anduril is fine for the same reason as throwing Arabella into the air was fine. Um, she loses her, uh, point of life drain from her trigger, but makes 2-1-1 spirits to compensate. So, as long as she's still getting through for damage or not getting blocked effectively, uh, we're actually adding one extra damage each time she attacks instead of losing one. And if the tokens live, that's even more damage on subsequent turns. We can lose Eowyn, though. We have the duplicant. And while Eowyn's cheaper, uh, her base stats make sure that she never um, counts towards Arabella. Whereas the duplicant absolutely can if it ex exiles something small enough. Or if we lose all of the targets and we don't want to exile anything of our own with duplicant, um, we can just have the copy or the original for that matter, coming as a 2-4. of Gondor, as long as we have enough humans left in the deck, that's fine. Um, Horn of Gondor, we just need to have humans, so that way if somebody wipes the board but we still have the Horn of Gondor, we can still make tokens with it. Um, Mithril Coat stays, Reprieve, maybe. We have so many variations on Battle for Bywater that we have to figure out which ones we want. And the One Ring, we have so much life gain off of Arabella that I can't imagine we don't want the One Ring. Uh, Song of Toten Taunts is Red and X make X1-1, one, one. Stroke of Midnight, uh, Anempakle, uh, the nice thing about Anempakle is she does not have to attack, whereas Kranko does, so she might make the final build. Also, we don't have, I don't think, any other gnomes in the deck, so we can usually trigger her. It's kind of like how Arabella's our only toy, so the um, Dollmaker shop is usually going to trigger Roaming Throne is primarily in here to name a uh, toy for Arabella, even though she is literally the only one, just so that way we can copy her triggers. Um, but we could also name any of the other creature types we have a lot of, so goblins potentially, or humans, or soldiers, depending on what we have. Their talk staying... Argus, I can see cutting. Um, we do have a few ex we have a handful of cards that give us extra combat steps. So Argus getting to attack multiple times just lets him exile stuff. Um, and he's within range of Arabella, so he's fine. I can see cutting him though because we don't have room. Honestly, we're probably gonna lose assemble the players. 
we have like most of our creatures are two power or less but so we have a lot of them but all of our non-creature cards are invalid all of our lands are invalid um and some of our creatures are going to be invalid which leaves us with probably between 20 and 30 creatures this thing can hit in our 100 card deck so between a fifth and a third of our deck is going to be valid for it and that doesn't sound great <laughs> that, that sounds very mean if it was if i could cast creatures from the top just straight up that would be infinitely better um or if i could play lands something anything other than being limited to just the small creatures uh, connecting the dots is fine. If I can attack with 10 creatures, that puts 10 cards underneath it. And we're not drawing those cards. We're putting them in our hand instead when we sacrifice it. So it gets around all of the punish extra card draw spells that crop up in Commander while letting us draw a fresh hand very easily. The only downside to it is it's not helping us when we're behind and missing creatures. You know, if we've just gotten hit by a Wrath and then we top deck this, then it's a terrible top deck. Um, but it does let us store a whole bunch of cards um, with one attack, so that way we can get a fresh hand later on. Delnay's too strong in this deck. All of our creatures, not all of them, Almost all of our creatures are two power or less, so copying that trigger and making them harder to block on top of that. There will be times where we just get to attack with our things. Unfortunately, they also fall into the category of cards that if they suddenly died uh, mid-combat, it would be super awkward and all of our little creatures could get blocked and eaten. That's true of a bunch of cards like that, and we're getting a whole lot of extra value out of Delne, so. Um, Calamity is fine for right now. I can see cutting Calamity because we don't need it, but very similar to um, Kiki. It's another Kiki variant uh, that lets us make copies of them, and the copies, again, I was going to say uh, Ortheon, is out of range, so is Calamity, but Calamity can potentially make two copies for no additional mana each turn, so just because it's out of range of Arabella doesn't mean it's as bad as Ortheon is. Most of my creatures, including Arabella, are not outlaws, so the posse boss is kind of the worst of our four mana make two extra creatures like i'd much rather have the beetleback chief and the goblin gang leader the 13 cuts already uh boots stay until i know how many haste effects i actually have fix that really quick uh ty can stay for right now matter weaver is fine not amazing the biggest problem with Matter Weaver is that we're not making um, tokens of artifact creatures very often. So, only the Kiki variants can make artifact creatures, I think, that aren't already 1 1 gnomes or maybe 1 1 soldiers from like Myrel. So, this one's kind of underwhelming. It's still a. Uh, Oketra's Monument, though, on a body, and sometimes it does better than that. So we don't want to get rid of it immediately. Caretaker's Talent is free card draw. It's constantly. And it gets to make a, token, a copy of one of our other tokens if we get a fancy token in play, so that's not terrible. Uh, Season of the Burrow can remove problematic permanence, but can also just make 5 one ones. And sometimes reanimating a cheap creature is really powerful. I mean, obviously I would love to reanimate um, our commander, but that's really dangerous. Because if they counter the Season of the Burrow, um, 
then she's stuck in the graveyard until we can find a way to exile her. Because we don't really get her back with many other cards in the deck. I suppose there's like one or two currently on the list. But yeah, I would love to give her Indestructible. I'd also settle for giving some of our other... Like giving Cranko or something Indestructible. The three mana Cranko. Um, or Onimpockle. Uh, the Star Charter can go. We do gain life basically every one of our turns as long as we can attack with our commander. So it does go and find us more stuff. But it's only okay. Uh, Storm Splitter will be determined if we have enough instants and sorceries to cast enough in a single turn that this is worthwhile. Uh, War and War Leader is fine for right now. It's starting to push... Uh, towards the higher end, because it's a 4-drop, and the Offspring makes it a 6-drop. But I think it's still fine. Oh, it's not when this attacks, it's when I attack. Like, the... War Leader does not have to attack, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Let's quadruple check that, though. Warren War Leader. Um yeah, one I attack. I choose one. Unfortunately, that does mean it can only make two one ones. It can also give our attacking creatures plus one plus one, and we can stack the triggers so that um our commander resolves first. And then we get the bonus so that way it doesn't grow things out of range. But I can see cutting the Warren War Leader just because it's a bit expensive for what it's doing. Arabella, we're obviously keeping. Uh, Dollmaker Shop. The only downside to the shop is that there will be times when only Arabella can comfortably attack. Um, at which point in time we're not making the 1-1 one -one token. Um, the Porcelain Gallery is potentially a different way to win. Similar to what I was saying about the Thraben Doomsayer, except we have control over when we trigger it. So, by activating it and turning all of our creatures into whatever number of creatures I have in play, we should be able to put a lot of damage through. And it's only six mana to activate. So, between the shop making one ones a lot of the time for us, and the other side actually letting us win with a large attack. Very similar to playing like a Crater Hoof Behemoth or something, but we don't have to spend like the 8 mana on Moonshaker Cavalry, which would be our next best bet for effect like that. Um, during Innocence, because it lets us draw a card. Fear of Missing Out. Depends on how easily we get Delirium. I think we're pretty good at getting it. We have a wide variety of all of the card types on the list right now, and I'm pretty sure we're, we will still have that when we're done. But if it looks like Delirium is going to be too hard to get with any kind of consistency, then the Fear is just a way worse extra combat step card. Uh, Overlord of the Mistmores is in here primarily because we can Impending it for 4 mana. So... And then it's a Grave Titan that's making flyers instead of zomb like ground zombies. So, uh, Razor can Horde Caller. We can probably cut it. Um, very similar to cards like Adelaine, uh, where it doesn't have to attack. And because the Gremlins are just put into play instead of put into play tapped and attacking, we don't need clean attacks with them in order to keep them around for subsequent turns to add to Arabella's stack. But it's a 5-mana 4-4 four, four that's not really doing much on its own. So, Jolly Balloon Man is another um, Kiki. Hero Recruiter tutors for almost all of our things. I can see Cutting Sun Titan. It's at the top end of our um, preferred curve. 
and some of our stuff is more than three mana. We do have a ton of, like, three-drop creatures, though, that we wouldn't mind getting back if they wandered off on us. Grand Abolisher makes it harder for our opponents to stop us once we get to combat, so we'll know if they have anything before then and can act accordingly. Swiftfoot Boots, Franco. We make a lot of goblins already, so Cranko's almost definitely going to have plenty of fodder. So his first activation should be making like four plus goblins. Uh, Audric, because we can stop our opponents from being able to block just because we're going wide. Archangel, for when we can only attack with Arabella anyway. Almost out of soda. Trying to shove the straw there, but it's like bending. Okay. That just about does it. Unfortunately, I have my water here with me. Okay. Um. Bionic Resonator to copy Arabella. Young Pyromancer depends on how many instants and sorceries we're running. First response, same as King Darien. As soon as he's bad, it's bad. In fact, as soon as he's bad, it's exponentially worse, so get rid of both of them. Uh, P and Kieran. Um. So they're making Thopters, which are not particularly well supported in our deck. Um, like, we don't have anything that cares about us having Thopters. It's nice that they're Flyers, and they are also artifact creatures that are better than Gnomes, both because they're flying, but because uh, Anim needs non-Gnome creatures to attack in order to get her counters, so if we were making Thopters instead with Alltech Matter Weaver, that would be better. Even making the soldier tokens off Myrel is better with Matter Weaver just because of that, so that has potential. I can see cutting them though. Like they're less powerful than um the goblins, since if we were to copy them we can't copy them with Kiki. If we were to copy them with Jolly Balloon Man, we'd lose the token copy of them and just get the two one ones. So, in a lot of ways, they're just worse than like a Beetleback Chief or a Gang Leader at that point. So I can definitely see cutting them. Uh, Sigil is fine for the same reason of Sublime Archangel and the other enchantment. Um. Lena, again, pushing the top end of what we can comfortably cast, but uh, I get a 1-1 one, one for each non-token creature I have, and when I sacrifice her, I give all of my creatures with lesser power indestructible until end of turn, which should be my entire board. Um, Lean and War Leader is a bad... Um, Hero of Bladehold. That's still fine. Uh, Ajani can just ruin opponent's board states. So I can very easily have 55 or more life. And his other modes are fine. Um, but in almost every scenario, I'm just going to... I'm planning on playing Ajani on 4 and going 0, kill all of your creatures and enchant... Or kill all of your creatures and artifacts. And I think that's a very reasonable thing to expect to be able to do with him. We have the uh, Lion Sash, and I think that's good enough that we don't need the Apostle also. 15 cuts now. Yeah, we can probably lose the Chandra. She's okay. But she's not doing enough, I don't think. 
It is nice to be able to flash back cards like Swords to Plowshares and whatnot with her minus, but Peter. Um, Scampering Scorcher is just worse than a lot of the other token makers on the list, and similar to the problems with P and Kieran, we're not making... We don't care that we're making elementals all that much, so... Really not helping anything. Vanguard is fine for right now. Osri's fine. Chandra's Incinerator's decent. It's a patient. Idol of Endurance is fine, but similar to the um, Sun Titan, might not be good enough. Um, since both of them are keyed off of casting cost rather than power of my smaller creatures. Speaker of the Heavens can probably go. It's nice that it's a 1 mana 1-1 one -one with a very relevant ability of making 4-4 four -four flyers. But the 4-4 four -four flyers aren't actually helping our commander. I think we actually need it. Uh, Mrs. Teferi definitely stays. She can just make all of our creatures unblockable for one mana per creature. And she lets us draw a lot of cards, potentially, if we want to. Cooter of the Guard. Sanctum Prelate can stay for right now. Uh, Regna's too expensive and a little too underwhelming, I think. It's 19 cuts. Blair and Recruiter can stay for right now. Nurse Gift, Talisman of Conviction, Ragavan, Johnny. Ocelot Pride stays, Spawn Gang Commander. I can see cutting the Ocelot Pride. I brought this up when I was going over the full list. Um, it doesn't make the tokens until end of turn, so there's going to be a lot of times where it doesn't count towards Arabella past itself being in play at the start of combat, and then if everything dies before I get to my next attack step, after the Ocelot's had time to make tokens... But it's still a one mana thing that can double my token production pretty easily, so I have trouble cutting it. Uh, Spawn Gang might go because the Eldrazi aren't relevant. And we have. We do still have uh, colorless creatures that we can sacrifice because of the artifact creature tokens that we can make. But we don't have a ton of colorless sources to activate them. But he might still be better uh, for the deck than something like Cloud Goat Ranger, where the Cloud Goat Ranger itself is too large to trigger Arabella. So, we'll have to see where we're at when we get closer to being done. Uh, Port Razor stays for right now because of the extra combat steps. Abdel stays for right now. Being able to exile all of our token makers until he leaves the battlefield and then make a bunch of tokens for each, like one token for each of our guys that we exiled seems potentially very strong. Our lack is extra combat steps. We kind of want to keep her. I can't imagine we ever successfully tempt anybody with Vengeance in this deck, but at the same time, uh, Red and X to make X11s is already... I'm willing to make X11s that can't block at sorcery speed, because there are only like three Secure the Waste caliber cards in our color combination, where it's one mana and X and make X11s. So even if nobody ever gets tempted with Vengeance, I think we're good to go. Uh... We've got a Johnny, we have to have Jazal. Also, being able to attack and then buff our team afterwards by the number of attacking creatures is potentially very devastating, and I'd like to keep that as an option. Unicorn is another one of the... Maybe we get to attack with everything and they can't interact with it. I suppose we lose the Thopter Baker... 
It's only one artifact per turn cycle. Our commander has to be in play for it to trigger. And it's not that impressive otherwise, so we're up to 20 cuts now. Wave is fine for right now. Maneuver and SWAT. Uh, low shield is actually very underwhelming. Uh, we added low shield early in the list, and we wound up with not enough artifact creature token makers, I think, to trigger him consistently, so... So that's 21. Sonya is fine for right now. Valiant Endeavor can go, because we have enough variations on it. That's 22. Race of the Blessed Graph is kind of medium. Two. 23 out of 24. Alright, so real quick. Lock 23 off of the list down to 213. Clear all. And go all the way back down. Scroll up a bit. The bottom of that list again. There we are. Alright, Storm of Souls gives us a whole bunch of 1-1 versions of our dead creatures, which is kind of exactly what I want. Like, that even makes the ones that are too big normally for our commander suddenly in range, while still having access to their effects. Uh, Grand, Crescent Grand Crescendo is a secure the waste for one extra mana that makes all of my things indestructible, and that's pretty good. I can see cutting a Thari. It can only... Well, the thing is is that it's very much like Anempakel and Krenko. Um, it's closer to Krenko in that it has to attack, but at the same time, I'm getting two twos and it has flying, so... It also has lifelink for the handful of cards that care when I gain life. So, I guess a Thari can stay... We're almost never going to be able to resurrect Othari, though. Like, when it dies, it's going to stay dead, because most of our things do not bring it back, since it's a 4-drop, or a 5-drop, rather. It's 4 to bring back, it's 5 to actually cast, so it's out of range of some of our things, and it's also a 3-3, three, three. so the few things that might get around that by caring about power don't. Uh, Clever Concealment is our backup... Um, Teferi's Protection. X-Plate is another way to get extra attack steps. Uh, Alliance is fine as both a card draw and a way to turn cards I don't need into 2-2 two -two Knights with Vigilance. So, if I'm flooding out, being able to discard lands and make 2-2s two to get more mileage out of Arabella's Trigger... Slice the Imperfect, Wildfire Awakener, has Convoke and makes X-1-1s, and yeah, it's probably just way too strong. Being able to tap all of my untapped creatures, probably except for Arabella at that point, to Convoke this thing in order to put a ton of extra bodies on the board, even if they can't attack this turn. Yeah, just having a Convoke make X-1-1s is probably too good for this deck. Um, fourth Aerolingus. Not thrilled about getting the uh, Monarchy, but probably still too good. <sighs> Alright, so if I cast two spells a turn, I get an O3 wall, and my walls have Exalted. We probably don't actually need this thing. It's okay. It's not too hard for this deck to cast two spells in a turn, since a lot of its spells are cheap. Um, but it's not a guaranteed thing. And then the walls having Exalted will only matter in scenarios where I kind of wish all of my things had Exalted on behalf of my commander. So Also, I can never attack with them because they're walls. 
and we don't have any way to let our defenders attack. So if we did get into a situation with things like the um, Raid Bombardment, Cavalcade of Calamity, um, or any of uh, Hell Rider, like any of those things where I matters that I can attack with the token creatures, these ones can't, so they'll never contribute to any of those cards. And it's four mana to set this all up, so... Um, Charismatic Conqueror, probably way too good. If opponents aren't, uh, putting their things into play, functionally tapped, uh, to keep this thing happy, then we're growing our army. And if they're casting stuff in the first place, um, then unless it's a bunch of artifacts and they're going to wipe the board of creatures, they're going to, if they're giving me... Um, creatures, because they're going to wipe the board, then they're going to be killing their creatures anyway, so they're not doing that. So, if they're giving me creatures, I'm probably going to get to keep those creatures in that situation. Uh, unexplained absence, too good. We ride at dawn. When my commander attacks, I get a 1-1 mercenary. That's probably too narrow. It's nice that the legendary creatures have Convoke, because we'll be able to cast them a lot easier with this deck, but we don't have that many. I guess it helps that we can Convoke out our commander with it, though, to pay the commander tax by tapping extra creatures, so maybe that's still worth it. Uh, Sawtooth Nemesis is fine, but we have slightly better options. The only thing about it is that it's two power, so it does count for Arabella. But I think we'd rather just have like the Fiendish Duo or something out, and then just copy that. Uh, the only other nice thing is that it doubles the damage that our opponents would deal to that particular player, so... That can be a thing. Like, that encourages them to attack that one player because they're extra vulnerable. So, if that particular player is a problem for us. But I think just having the double damage in general is going to be better for us in the long run. Uh, Siege Gang Lieutenant definitely stays, since as long as we have our commander, it's making two one ones a turn. Yeah, it's just so much better than The Apprentice. Uh, Thopterist, or whatever its name is. Uh, Jack Rabbit. Base is a one-power creature that makes one-ones when it attacks, so at its worst, uh, it's a bad Cranko, but it's usually going to be much better than that. If we ever cast it on seven mana, so X equals five, then we get to draw a card on top of that. And it's a six power creature, so it'll make six one ones when it attacks. But even if we can't get it up to quite such lofty numbers, being able to attack and get like three or four rabbits each time is pretty decent. Uh, I get instigator being an impact tremors, like corridor. It's fine. Four mana to make three one ones is okay, and four mana to add two damage to my non-combat sources. I can see cutting this one because we don't have enough of either. You know, like, the red and three to make three one ones is a one-shot, so we don't really need that, and red and three to add two damage to my non-combat sources is low impact, so neither side is doing enough. We're not getting enough out of either side. To merit it. Yeah, I don't think I phrased that particularly well when I started that sentence. Like, not that one. The first one trying to describe Spike Cord or why it's an issue for the deck. Like, why I might not want it. <sighs> Can you tell I've been talking basically nonstop for three days now? Ah, Diggs. Hello. Sorry, I was very distracted going through this list. How are you doing today? My apologies. I did not mean to miss your entrance to the chat. Uh, 
of Exelius Praetor is another one. Uh, we skipped over the Soaring Lightbringer. Do I want this? As a 5 mana 4 5, it attacks, I make a 1 1 that's tapped and attacking, and my. And because the 1 1 is an enchantment, it has flying. That's very much like the um, Razorkin. So we probably don't need that. Is it just one? Like, it's not for each opponent I'm attacking or something. This is Soaring Lightbringer. Because it is a commander card, I'm kind of surprised I don't make one. Whenever I attack a player, okay, so it does make one for each opponent. It's not when this attacks, it's when I attack. Yeah, I have this very wrong in its text. So when I attack, I make a 1-1 enchantment glimmer that's tapped and attacking. For each opponent that I'm attacking. And my other enchantments have flying. That's a bit better if we can attack multiple opponents, but I'm not sure how often that's going to be true. Yeah, I worded that awkwardly. I should... I could do a lot better if I was trying harder, but I'm not going to. That is a lot closer to what it's supposed to be doing. Uh, when I attack, my attacking historic creatures get plus one, plus one, and indestructible until end of turn. So, she's useful because she's a trigger, so as long as I get the trigger to go on the stack, as long as she's alive when I declare Arabella as an attacker... Uh, she's going to gain indestructible, so that's probably worth considering at least. I don't think I wound up with enough artifact creatures for Eye of Alexandria. Um, and I only have so many legendary creatures too, so we can probably lose her. Like, she's out of range of Arabella. The Menace is fine. But I have to hit multiple opponents to make multiple tokens in a turn. And it is combat damage. If it wasn't not... If it was non-combat damage, if it was just my historic uh, creature deals damage to an opponent once per turn... I make a 1-1, one -one, so that way all of the damage being dealt to all my opponents would give me, like... Two to three one ones with Arabella. Yeah, I think we can lose Aya. She's underwhelming. Galia's fine. Powering attack is fine right now. Get rid of release the dogs. Leader stays, Goliath stays, Fiendish duo. So one, two, three, four more. Managed to cut 27 cards so far. We're also closing in on the hour mark, so... Or faster pass through here. gonna have to start doing the sub list soon uh for this deck because we need to see how much artifact and enchantment hate we have because i think we have a little too much and we'll be able to cut down a bunch of cards from the list make room for other things i don't want to keep the snaring bridge for right now goblin trenches aggravated assault Violence is fine. Anything I missed the first time through, really not pulling its weight. Is 
Raptor, Revelark. Yeah, the more I look at Rise of the Hobgoblins, the more I think it's just worse than a lot of the other similar cards that I have. That we can get rid of it. The only nice thing about Rise is that it's an ETB trigger where we can pay X rather than having X in the casting cost. So we can cast it for two mana and have it resolved, but we don't really have a way to blink enchantments or copy enchantments, so can't quite make use of that. It would be really cool if we did, though, being able to blink this and just pay X and get X 1-1s again each time, but we don't currently have any way to do that, and adding in a bunch of cards to make that work seems a bit much. We have plenty of ways to copy our creatures, like make a token copy of our creature and therefore get the ETB triggers again. Of Certainty, Martial Coup, Path of Exile. I have a feeling I'm going to wind up losing the Lapse of Certainty in the, um, the other one from Lord of the Rings at this rate, just because we have so many different ways to protect our creatures, which is primarily what I want. Like, Labs of Certainty is in here to counter a Wrath effect and buy me time to finish the game before the Wrath effect kills all of my creatures. So, I think we have enough other variants that will get us through effects like that that we don't need... Now, granted, there will be times where it's like, oh, I can lapse a certainty this thing that Teferi's Protection or, um, you know, one of the other ones, uh, uh, Flawless Maneuver or something, doesn't really affect. You know, it's nice that I have protection from everything and my stuff phases out, but when my stuff phases back in, that one permanent is still going to be there, and if I could have hit it with lapse of certainty, it wouldn't be, but... By the same token, I could probably kill it with one of my permanent removal spells, since we have so many. We have a lot of White's versatile kill-anything removal cards on our list, so... Yeah, we probably lose Laps of Certainty. One of those cards I always want to run, and I used to have on like the short list of all of my commander decks that run White, but not Blue. But it just never quite makes it. Or Village Bell Ringer stays for right now. Hell Rider, Ocean, Requiem Angel. It's so good though, because all of my tokens, it's not non token, it's non spirit. So as long as my token creatures are dying into different token creatures, like if I could get one more effect like that, where it's like every time my non, I don't know, human or something dies. I make this type of token instead. Because um, then if we had two of those, like, then the Requiem Angel and that thing are making replacement creatures for each of my things that are dying that are the other ones. And when one of my uh, tokens that's not either of those dies, I get the other two tokens to replace them. That would be huge if we could get something like that going. But unfortunately, I think this is the only one that's worded that way. So. All the rest of them are like when your non-token uh, creature dies. So. Rather than not being of the appropriate type. A Gisela Blade of Gold Knight. Gisela's a little above where we want to be. I did gloss over that one as we were going through the list the last time. So she's a little bit above our top end casting cost at seven, but she's also a damage doubler that reduces my incoming damage. So. I can see cutting Gisela only because she's seven mana. Like, that seems to be the biggest thing working against her right now. Keeping all of these for right now. Yeah, we have to do sub lists for all of the things that protect our creatures when we attack with them. Tour, secure the wastes. Maria, Captain's Claws. 
Jefferson's fine for right now. Keep release the gremlins. Might have too many artif like red artifact destruction spells too, like specifically red artifact destruction. Whereas the white, we have some enchantment removal, but we also have uh, full on disenchant or destroy a non land permanent effects that we can lean on. So we probably have too many artifact destruction cards in mono red. We'll have to lose a bunch of them. But I think the one that makes gremlins. This one does have to be X artifacts, right? Like, release the gremlins is not. Um, pest infestation. Yeah, it's destroy X target artifacts, create X22 tokens. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I didn't miswrite it down here. So that way we could have made X gremlins regardless. But yeah, so red and two kills an artifact gives me a two two. Red and four kills two artifacts gives me two two twos. But at red and four with um the overload one, we can just destroy all of our opponent's artifacts. So maybe that one's just better than being able to make two two twos at that point. Yeah, we have too much artifact destruction. I think I need to go over all of it as a separate sublist. But we're at the hour mark now, and I kind of like to keep the ones that I'm posting to YouTube shorter. So, yeah, I think we'll cut these last two cards, and we'll pick back up next time. We'll start doing the sublists. Um, so that's going to do it for the deck building for today. I'm probably going to be back on later doing a draft or two. I think I'm done with the Arena Cube. Like, I did it three times like I said I would. I played against Grenzo twice. I haven't played with Grenzo yet. And I think I'm good. I think I'm good with that cube. Um, we do all right, but nothing too amazing. And a lot of my decks feel very uh, train wreck caliber, where it's like... There's so much powerful stuff going on in this cube, and I don't have any of the really amazing cards. So my deck is just medium at best, and we have to cobble together wins. Uh, whereas Dustmorn, I'm still having fun with the set. Um, as much as I hate Dustmorn, like, I look at Dustmorn, I'm just like, I hate how this looks. I despise how this looks. It does play well, and at the end of the day... I am way more Melvin than Vorthos, uh, to use the magic jargon. Um, I'm much more concerned that the game plays interestingly and well than that there's cool uh, lore and stuff going on with it. So, But I do hate it from a um, storyline, lore, and appearance. Like The aesthetics of the set are just so terrible. Um, I hate Universes Beyond as a concept, too. Like, I would much prefer um, homages, parodies, and references than just straight up having other source material as magic cards. And I felt like that ever since they announced the Walking Dead cards way back when. Um, so, I do hate Dustmourne, and I'm not super thrilled with some of the other magic sets coming out next year, both the universes beyond stuff, but also the death ray set, um, aether drift or whatever. Um, like I see Doretti in like a oil stained t-shirt doing mechanic work. And it's just like, Oh my God. Uh, why? why, why are we doing this? He, he looks like, he looks like a goblin dressed as a 1950s, uh, greaser type from like, like, literally from the musical Grease or something. Like, he's got, like, the leather jacket and the white t-shirt on underneath, and he's doing mechanic work on a vehicle, and it's just... Uh, I, I hate things that look too much like modern, boring, day-to-day -day stuff. I like magic being fantasy, and I would also accept, like, extreme sci-fi, too. Like, I'm way more interested in Edge of Eternity than I am in the Death Race set. I'm okay with things being 
Especially if we go more Star Wars than Star Trek. Like, because Star Wars is just basically fantasy with space trappings. You know, your sword is a laser sword. Uh, your crossbow shoots energy bolts. Um, your, um, your non-human companions are aliens instead of uh, fairy tale creatures. You know, all of that is fine. Like... I prefer that, but even hard science, um, like, so far into the future that it functions like magic, uh, for all intents and purposes, because it's just so far beyond what we have access to right now, uh, is also okay. I just don't like when it looks like, like, I lived through the 80s. I did not need an 80s-themed magic set where everybody has big shoulder pads and looks like they took forever to get their hair done. I did not need that as a magic set. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it still plays really well. And at the end of the day, I do care more about how well the set plays than what it looks like. I would just prefer if we could have both like we used to when we had a really good magic set. Um, but yeah, it's going to do it for me for right now. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.